This is notes on sitting beside a noble corpse, light breeze stirring the curtains blue, faint tremor of his blue shroud. And this was written by the poet's bed, his own loft, his body in repose after death, Gaelic Rinpoche and monks chanting the Chakra Samvara Sadhana, April 5th, 1997, New York City. Allen Ginsberg will never raise this body up, go out, board a shiny airplane, travel a thousand miles, Denver, thousands, Milano, Prague, to pump the harmonium. How ecstatically he does this chant, Om Namo Shivaya, all ashes, all ashes again. Allen Ginsberg will never sit across the street hunched over Chinese noodle bowl. The old professor stayed up late reading the young poet's poems. Allen Ginsberg will never meditate this body, spine straight to heaven, holding up the roof of the world on the bright orange cushion. Allen Ginsberg's eyes will never water again of tear gas, bells palsy or flow on the death of a guru. Read Blake Shelley lines to freeze your soul and you weep and you weep in the whole Naropa disembodied Kerouac tent is weeping. Allen Ginsberg will never tell awkward teen boy he's known since birth. He's sexy again from hospital bed. The boy stood at the window while his mother sobbed because Allen Ginsberg said he's dying today. Allen Ginsberg will never brush this corpse's thin hair, get groomed, oil feet, brush teeth. He's so conscientious, mix mushroom leeks and winter squash breakfast again. The telephone rings. Allen Ginsberg will never answer it again. Allen Ginsberg will never embarrass China, Russia, the White House, dead corrupt presidents, Cuba, the CIA, and the straight homophobic universe again. But Allen Ginsberg will ever ease this suffering with human story and song that's born on wings of perpetual prophecy, life and death's a spiral. He's mounting the stairs now with Vajra Yogini. Full 20th century brilliant Allen's gone. In other myriad forms live on. See through this palpable skull's tender eye. Kind mind, kind mind, don't die. I'm so happy we're honoring Allen at this festival. And last piece, neural, linguistically, this is the writing dance. This is the writing dance, or a plumed helmet, which itself resembles a heart in the shape of Africa. Continents, continents. The challenge is to question the warrior. Get inside his, her armor. Get inside the land which has no boundary. We could talk about China now. It's economics. It's technocrats. The backdoor deals. We could be happily Canadian, but could we really? We could talk about Liberia and New Orleans and Lebanon, suffering everywhere, and Congo and our own backyard safe starlet stomp on it right now out on that turf this is the obsequious politician flattering you you never believe him never the eminence of philosophy so crenellated so terraced pronouncing the name of your dance down with a tyrant this is the gesture and the name down with the tyrant down with his exaggerated thunder you want to talk psychosis down with the tyrant daggers hysterical puritans starved animals you wanna you wanna you want to talk you want to write this is the writing dance written for all to see the whole picture of the decimated site, the picture of charnel ground. The jackals came and the jackals came, sift, sift through the body parts, sift, sift. See the back of his head? Would a gesture knock him off? 
Or is he too steely-eyed? Eyes look through the head, inside there, the little screen. The trick is to dance upon it. The dance I was doing is the written dance, to be a barker, to be a noisemaker, to be a saint. Tools, linens, weapons, wires, women creating sainthood, place hands together and bow. This was the written dance, eyes looking back on themselves before growing cold. Check out the moon, check out all the characters. The philosopher, for example, her window of the room, the guy ready to blast his M16, the naturalist with steely gaze. Dark streets out there below the moon, is that what I see? Is it written? No, this is the smitten dance, flying over the occupied territories. Don't! Talk to me about transgression anymore. This is the trespass dance. This is the way I get down for it. It's my power structure to strangle Rumsfeld. Strangle Rumsfeld. Avant thee, thou Rumsfeld. Pathological inanities and euphemisms. Strangle Rumsfeld. If I were a scientist, I would scream in my scientist voice, neurons, neurons. I would say it again and again the way the neurons like to be commended and commented upon. Dear neurons, you can be so kind. I would say elephants move like this neuro-linguistically. And hyenas are shrieking at the body politic, and snakes move like that. And if I were a Sufi, I would spin out of here. This is not the terra firma dance. This is not the map of the capital materialist hunter dance. This is the writing dance. Ida Lupino liked it. She wanted the script to go on, and many of the women stars of another era were never confused about priorities. They had their stage directions, their moves, their maps. They had their songs, their gestures, their postures. They performed for a silver screen. They had their desires. And their sky was covered with a thin layer of clouds, and everything was quiet and still when they came on the set. It was like a scene of tranquil poetry. It was a scene you had to have been there for as it got written. And the one who emerged, who lingered, was the one you pointed to was, was she. And she, who had been stalling, feet like the feet of many different animals, and with eyes in all the pores of their pelts, and voices sounding as only she could as them, and mapping, and changing the way the right would go if it were a dance. You might wonder. Thank you.